Good afternoon, good evening, all of my beautiful people out in this beautiful world of live streaming. I am Deshaun Antoinette Booker, and I am your maximizing coach. And listen, you know that I always say, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart, listen, I am super duper excited about today's show. I'm always excited about all of the shows because I get to sit at the table, honey, with some phenomenal, extraordinary, fabulous women. And I get to have them deposit into me and you as well. So it is such a blessing to be able to host this platform with you. So I'm going to jump right in because listen, it is going to be some juicy, yummy, delicious delectables for your heart, for your spirit, and some diamonds for your destiny. Okay. Before we get started, let me just tell you about the Yummy Cafe. Well, we are all creative beings, right? We have things that have been deposited into us and what should we do and how do we flow in the world? Well, the Yummy Cafe came because I truly have a love for working with and being around and inspired by phenomenal women entrepreneurs. I always wanted to have a space where I could allow women to come and share about where they are in their journeys, right? You know what? We always see the end result of a woman, right, in, in business. We see, you know, where she is and how she, you know, really is allowing her gift to serve the world. But how did she get there? What was her journey like? So, you know, I'm just that girl. I am a little inquisitive. Okay, Deshaun, I'm a lot of inquisitive. That's the nicer way of saying nosy. So I wanted to have a space where I could celebrate women entrepreneurs and they share with us, how did they go from an idea to an investment, right? How did they go from just having this, you know, small seed in the belly of their soul, honey, and then they gave birth and began to create a successful, thriving business. How did they do it? You know, I've always said this, when I was younger, and it's a true story. I would sit on my floor in the bedroom, right? And I would just flip through pages of the magazines and different advertisements. And I was so drawn to these women who were doing powerful things. I would read their stories and I would visualize me doing the same, me knowing who they were. I looked at their style, their, their dress and what the products that they were putting out. And I was like, I like that. I want to do some of that. Right. And so when I got to college, and this is my first time saying this, I think when I got to college, I actually took magazines and I would pull the pages of those magazine of the women and I actually made it my wallpaper, honey, in my dorm room. I had women who were inspiring me and they didn't even know it. I had women on the back of my doors, above my sink, everywhere because I was just that drawn to their drive and determination and their fierceness, their classiness, honey, their sophistication and their smarts. I just couldn't get anywhere around it. And so when I began to see that I too hmm, wanted to become an entrepreneur, I began to really align myself up with that, right? Well, I didn't know there was going to be these bumps and these bruises and the highs and the lows. I was expecting a journey that was glamorous and sophisticated. Well, there have been many pain points along the way. And we are going to talk about those pain points today. I want you to know that the women that you are allowing yourself a little sneak peek into their backdrop, right? They're telling you their journeys of how they became phenomenal entrepreneurs because they already started out being phenomenal women. And so this is the space in which we come and collaborate, we share, we talk, we motivate, we inspire, and we elevate. We elevate your thinking so that you know that you too can continue on your journey of success and whatever God has put into your spirit. 
Now, again, it's not always going to be an easy drive, an easy journey. But you know what? When we are persistent and we know that God has aligned us with his purpose, it's all good. As a matter of fact, it's all great. So we're going to get into this right away because we have a wonderful hour planned for you. And again, you know, I'm super duper excited, right? What do I always want you to do? Go get your cup and your salsa, get your sister girls, and come on over right now to the Yummy Cafe. We're getting ready to give you your diamonds for your destiny. This sister that I'm bringing to you today, my goodness, you know what? She's just powerful. Powerhouse, right? Her energy is always uplifting and energetic and motivating and inspirational, even when she's just not even saying a word. It truly, truly is. I'm going to give you who she is, bring you on, have this dialogue, and we are going to have such a wonderful time this evening on the Yummy Cafe. If you have questions, please put them in the chat. We're going to answer them in real time. If you're watching this on the replay, all you have to do is put hashtag replay and I make sure that I read them and I come back and I'm going to answer your questions. If you have a question for our guest, she will also be forwarded all of your energies, honey, so she can answer them as you would love for her to answer them. So you don't have to be any way silent. You don't have to be, you know, uh, feeling like nervous about it or shy. This is our space, sisters and men, for us to have this conversation so that we are all elevating and living our lives magnified. Without any further ado, let me tell you who our guest is today. Miss Don Strozier is an exuberant host, motivational speaker, author, and the author of over 50 in Fit Secrets and the founder of DS Fitness and Fit to Win Bootcamp. Backed by over 20 years of experience mending the mind and molding the body, Don has earned the respect of both men and women of her ability to inspire you and get results. Her expertise as a trainer is attracting her client roster that includes professional athletes, Hollywood executives, and an A-list actors. Client comedian Mr. Steve Harvey himself says, it's the best program ever. And we know Steve Harvey tells the truth, honey. Don has shared her intrinsic health and wellness messages as a keynote speaker for a variety of organizations such as the American Diabetes Association, American Cancer Society, Vons Corporation, Alpine, as well as a host of marketing organizations, women's groups, including mine, yes, 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 and various athletics events. Now listen, Don is committed to helping women over 50 learn their bodies all over again. And ladies, you know we need that, right? And taking their lives back. It is passion she's developed from her own struggle after turning 50. And it's a message she loves to share. You can melt belly fat, build lean muscle, and build the body you want at any age. Now, ladies, you know we cannot wait to hear all of her jewels, her nuggets, and diamonds for our destiny. I'm excited. She took time. Listen, before I bring her on, this woman is Miss Los Angeles when it comes to health and fitness. Her name is a household name, honey. When you see Don, you see health and fitness and motivation all up and through Los Angeles. So I'm so excited that she took time out of her wonderful productive ministry business to come on over to the Yummy Cafe. Without any further ado, let's bring her in. Hey, Don. Hello, Miss Booker. What, 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 what? Hello, love. How are I am you? so happy. I'm good. I'm so excited to see you in the building, in the room. You know, you are you are not busy. You are manifesting <laughs> all over the world, Don. She is manifesting every hour, second, minute of the day. Don, am I making that up? Am I making that up, Don? No, no, you're not making that up. I love what I do. I absolutely love what I do. And guess what? I think I'm more excited about what I'm doing now than I've ever been in my life. At this moment, I am so 
excited about what God's doing. It's just crazy. It's how crazy. How you can right? be in 20 years and still love it. I absolutely love it. I love, I it. love <laughs> it. I love it. Listen, Don, I told you this. I don't know if you remember, but on one of my Facebook, in my Facebook group with the ladies, right? Uh, the maximum potential experience. Mm -hmm. I'm always giving, you know, messages, of course. And one week I was talking about, you know, um, you know, your mindset and health and wellness. And I took a snippet, honey, of Miss Don's video from her page. I said, right. they need to see this and they need to get with this program. So Don, I am all over you. I am over your energy. Thank and what you. You're, doing. you're so welcome. It's amazing. It really, really yeah. is. You know how to transform the room. Thank you. you walk in the room and you change the atmosphere. You change the atmosphere. And so we're going to talk a lot about that today, everyone. Okay. Again, remember that we are here for you live. If you're watching the replay, go ahead and put hashtag replay, right? The hashtag and put your comment, your suggestion or your question. And we will make sure that we get back to you immediately because that's just what we do. It's a conversation. It's a dialogue. It's not a monologue. Right, Don? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so this is how we move and flow. We move and flow in this space, what I call moments right. and what I call movements, because I like movements. They're flowing. They're not going as fluid. Yes. Right. And yes. so our moments that we have are the questions and how we really have our conversation and our dialogue. So this is really my guest. This is their show, honey. I'm just facilitating and I'm taking notes and I'm doing just like the audience, the listeners. I'm going no. What? No, wait a minute. <laughs> I am because I'm just that girl that's nosy and I want the backstage pass. I want the backstage pass. Right. right? Absolutely. So, Don, we're going to jump right in, you know, and um, we're going to start with our first moment. Right. Yeah. And the yeah. question that I'm always asking the guests is, what was your inception moment? Mm -hmm. When did you know, Don, that this dream? And if it looked like a dream, then okay, mm -hmm. maybe it didn't. She'll wow. tell you. Wow. But when did you know, right, that this is what your your course was going to be? This right. was your your purpose to step out and serve in, in this platform. How did that show up for you? Well, let me say this. Um, I love the question because it didn't show up for me like it may show up for everyone else or uh, how you think it would show up. Uh, my first inception moment was when I had to say yes to myself. I had to say yes to me first. I had to say yes to the faith in me that I had what it take for me to, to go out here and make my life work. Just to give you a little bit, of, uh, uh, tell you a little bit about my journey. I moved to Los Angeles, California at 19 years old. I was moving away from home because I was having some challenges in the family that uh, at the time I thought my world was falling apart. In retrospect, they weren't that bad. It was God, it was God set up, God ordained set up, right? Yes. But during that time, things were so, so challenging for me. I remember uh, my 12th grade year, I had to go to the principal's office. And I told my principal, I said, if I know that you want to see me every single day, if you will meet me at my homeroom every day, I'll make it out to 12th grade. I was ready to drop out of school because things were so rough. My Things were so rough around me. I told him, I need, to, I need help getting here every day. And my principal said, I will meet you at your homeroom every day. And for every single day of my 12th grade year, mm. I, my principal showed up to make sure I was there and I did not miss a day wow. of school. So when I, got out of, when I got out of college, I didn't go to prom. I didn't go to, I didn't go to graduation. I didn't do any of, the, any of the things the high school graduates were doing. I was happy to get out of school. Just to give you a little idea what was happening with my family. So wow. 19 years old, I hit the road. I said, I'm, I'm moving to California. I drop into California. Three days later, I, I'm greeted by my cousin when I dropped into California, greeted by her. Three days later, I'm homeless on the street. No place to go. Wow. Three days later, mm. all my clothes taken from me, no suitcase, no mm. clothes. Mm. So I had to say to myself, home or homeless? Right, right. Home or homeless? Yes. That day I chose homeless. That day I bet on me. That day I said, I got what it takes to get up and make my life work. So mm. my first inception wasn't to entrepreneurship, it was to me, mm. what I was going to do. That I had to dig deep and make my life work. No one, no one was coming to save me. Wow. I had to do it. So that was my first inception. Uh, my second, now, 
when I graduated from school, I took a work program in high school. I learned how, one of the reasons why I talk so fast, <laughs> because I, I'm not, I'm a court sonographer. I type 225 words a minute. So when I came to California, I had some of a plan. I said, I'm gonna land in California and I'm gonna do court sonography. I'm gonna be a court reporter. <laughs> well, after getting here, homeless on the street, I'm saying I gotta, I gotta get, get a regular job and I'll try to figure out how I can get um, into a career here as a court sonographer. Find out that I had to retake the test, the court sonography test. That's okay, that's okay. I type 225 words a minute. Well, guess what? If you know anything about California, California sets the bar for everything. Yes. If you come here as a hairstylist, you come to California from, from back east as anything, you gotta retake the test. Yes. In Cleveland, the um medical terminology and the legal terminology that you learn as an entrepreneur, I mean as a court stenographer, they were six months long. We're here in California, they're a year and a half each. So I had to go back to school. A year and a half for medical terminology, a year and a half for legal terminology. And then they weren't offering them at the same time. So now we're looking at more schooling for me. Mm. And then I couldn't get a grant. So that is when I say yes. <laughs> Entrepreneurship. Because I, I, I'm, uh, how I got my first job being homeless, amazing story. But I, I found out quickly that if you didn't have a skill in California, it was with the cost of living, there was really no way that she was gonna make any good money. So now here I am, of course, I'm not with the trade I couldn't use. So I'm at the point where I gotta be an entrepreneur. I have to go out here and make things happen for myself. So that was my second moment. Okay. That this was it for me. Mm. And then now I'm, I'm uh, when I realized that um, this is what I was gonna be doing for a living, I'm in my career. And a lot of people are saying, oh, you're gifted to do that, you're gifted to do this. And, and uh, believe it or not, I, I didn't think it was a gift. Oh, I say no gift. This just worked for me, you know. Right. And then um, that gift everybody was talking about started making some serious room for me, right? Proverbs what eighteen sixteen? Come on, don't worry. to make room for you and put you in front of great men. That gift start that I didn't think was a gift started paying me like a ten thousand dollars a month. Started putting me yes. in some amazing places. Mm. And then that's when I realized at that moment. I realized that this was it. This was a tree and industry. I was going to plant my feet. I was going to do whatever I had to do to make my mark. And here I am. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. Don, listen, listen. What I'm hearing you say, mm -hmm. and you know, this story is so powerful, is you really had to, on your own, decide yeah. if you had the mindset. Yeah. I had to get that right first. And first. so... Did it happen easy for you? Did you go back and forth and battle with yourself? Or did you just, you said, no, you decided you had to do yeah. home or homeless. Yeah. When you chose homeless, what were you thinking? What were you oh, thinking? When I made the decision, when I made yeah. the decision that I was, when I made the decision that I was going to choose homeless, wasn't time to cry. I couldn't be upset. I chose homeless. I can go, I can go back home and deal with my situation. I chose homeless. So I can't cry. I got to give them, make it happen. So listen, at this point, I'm sleeping in vacant. I was sleeping in the vacant apartment building. I was sleeping, um, uh, yeah, at the time I was sleeping in the vacant apartment building. So, and I was waking up in the morning, sitting on the stoop, trying to figure out what my next move was going to be. I was like, okay. So I sat there for a couple of days straight. And then I start to see I have the same clothes every single day. <laughs> this wasn't getting any better. What am I going to do? So I walked into Macy's one day. Might have been two weeks later, walked into Macy's. They said they weren't hiring. I asked where's the executive offices. It was it was it was Robinson's me at the time. Yes, yes. I walked yes. upstairs and I said, This is how serious I was. And I chose homeless, I had to make it happen. Mm. I said, um, I knocked on the door, I said, Can I speak to the the manager, the owner, whoever whoever's in charge? Can I speak to the guy in charge? <laughs> and then they they went and got him and he can I help you? And I said, Well, it's a shame you guys aren't hiring. He said, Huh? I said, It's a shame you're not hiring, boy. You're gonna miss out on the best employee you could have ever had. And he was like, Who? I said, Me. <laughs> he hired me around the spot. <laughs> I he love it. He called me his office. He was like, Well, if you got the nerve to knock on my door, ask to speak to me, and tell me I'm about to miss up miss out on the best employee with them with some great customer service skills. I need to see who you are. I got the job that day. Yes. And then as I was leaving, I said, excuse me, um, I may have this on tomorrow. 
But don't worry, I find a way to wash it. I said, I may, no. I, may, I, may, I, may have, I may have this on for two weeks, but the moment you give me that check, I'm gonna I'll so be the best dressed person here. Come on, sister. Come so that's on. the attitude I had to have. Yes. But that attitude was in me a long time ago. It was in me when I went to the principal's office and I asked mm. him, if you, if I know you're going to see, you want to see me every day, I'll show up. I just need it. Les Brown has a quote that says, sometimes you have to believe in somebody else is belief in you until your belief kicks That's in. That's right. That's right. So I told him I was growing weary because I was having the challenges at home. But if I know that you want to see me, I'll show up mm. just to say hi to you every day. Mm. You hear me? Done. We done. Listen. Okay, everybody. We done. Thank you. That was it. We done. <laughs> I told Whoa. you, listen, I told the people, I told the people who I was bringing into yeah. this room, and, and Don, they don't know when me and you get together, this energy, I'm, I'm over here, I'm keeping my calm, my cool, listen, I told you she was yeah. a fireball, I told you she was going to light this room up, that she, uh -huh. you are, you are manifesting is what I call it, Don, that, that humbling Yet yeah. overcoming testimony is so powerful, sis. It is so powerful. And I'm so yeah. thankful that you have allowed yourself to share it with the world. Yes, yeah, so inception starts with you. Inception starts, it starts with you. you believing wow. in yourself, having the wow. faith. I chose homeless, so I can't complain. Wow. Wow. Like, no, I choose single. I choose single so I can get some things done. That's so when right. I get a little upset because ain't nobody here. I that's can't right. get mad. I don't have men issues. I choose single for a minute. I told you, they not ready for this. They not ready for this. They not ready for this conversation. We have this. They not ready. Listen, let me get a little sip of this. They not listen. Uh -uh. <laughs> they not ready down for this. They not ready. Listen, everyone. You need. I see. Oh, I got a comment over there. Check that comment, Don. So, Don, how yeah. did that then transition into? health and fitness and motivation and wellness, you know. Let me I, say this. Yes, yeah, say it, sis. Crazy, say it. crazy. Oh, let me see y'all something. God knows what he's doing. All you got to do is trust him. It would make so much sense later. It would make so much sense later. I watch God use every, every struggle, every insecurity, every yes. disappointment, every heartbreak to bring me to where I am. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So yeah. I started training. I started going to the gym out of not out of being insecure about my weight. Uh, I, I was thin. I was the same weight I am right now. Back then, I it didn't like me because mm -hmm. my sister would take all my boyfriends. I anybody that had an interest in me, they stop by the house, they see my sister. I'll be looking at them. They go, me, my sister, me, wow. my sister, and I literally watched them switch teams. I, there they go. They fell for her. Because okay. she was so beautiful, she had this hourglass figure. So I'm in LA, right? I am uh I am at the time I'm kind of put myself together. I got myself in a place. Um, trying to make a long story short, got myself into a place. I meet a young man. It is I meet a young man that fell in love with my face because he couldn't see my body because it would be 90 degrees outside. Don had a leather jacket. To her neck down to her knees because I didn't like people looking at me. Somebody was gonna figure out I was skinny. Right, right, right. <laughs> so okay. and he said, he was like, um, the first time he made my homeless jacket, and he was like, Are you all right? I said, I'm good. He said, Okay, well, maybe it's a little cold in here. So that's he was thinking. So then he asked me on a date. We went to Red Lobster at the time. Okay. It's okay. nine degrees outside, same leather jacket up to my neck, down to my knees. And he go, Are you hot? You'll take your jacket off. I said, No, I'm okay. Sweat run down the side of my face. <laughs> he said, Now come on. By that time, sweat runs just running down. And so he's like, um, uh, we need to talk. And he says, What is up? Every time I see you got on this jacket. Yeah. So he talked to me and he said, Well, you know the gym, you go to gym and you can work on all that. Mm. Introduce me to the gym. Wow. And then I fell in love with how the gym made me feel. Yes. I fell in love with it. Yes. Not that it changed me. I got in the gym and started working out. I'm gonna do it guys are kicking in. The mirror started looking different. Sometimes when you're just working on yourself, yes. it changes your state. Yes. It makes you happy about you because you're just working on it. Right. Ain't nothing, ain't not one muscle show up, but because I'm in there working, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So that's how yes. I end up in the gym. End up wow. in the gym working out. And uh, I love the way I was feeling because I was working on me. And I said, 
um, this is good. I want to do this. I want, and when you're, when you're, when, when, when God is ordering your steps, now I'm not saying I'm, he, I'm, he, he's ordering my steps. I am there that. That's right. So when God got you, he going to lead you where you need to be. That's I'm right. in the gym, 19 years old, run into the body, the Godfather bodybuilder, Mr. Charles Glass. Takes me under his wing, teaches me everything I know, gets me licensed as a trainer. Wow. That's how I started. Wow. He got me licensed as a trainer, taught me everything I know. I met a man wow. who saw my challenge, introduced me to the gym, changed my life. And then I started training, getting myself in shape. I liked the way it felt. And I said, I, I started talking different. I started feeling better about myself. And it just changed me. I ended up. I signed up for Toastmasters. From Toastmasters, I met Mr. Les Brown, yes, who I end up spending so much time with. My one of my closest friends to stay taught me how to speak. He knew I was trained at the time. Yeah. We at we're at um we're at the Speakers Association. It's like a thousand dollars a plate to get in. He takes me with him. We're looking on the screen, and it said he knows I'm going to the gym at this time, not for having really burnt my training career. And he looked because I wanted to speak. I wanted to talk about what how I was feeling. And he looked up on the on the um on the mirror, and they were talking about the different industries that was coming up. And they said, "Health and wellness is projected to be a trillion dollar industry." He looked at me. He said, "That's your talk, and then you're gonna be a trainer." Wow. So, but then he said to me, "I want you to do both, and the world's gonna tell you who you are." He said, "Sometimes you gotta step on faith, speak That's right. and train. That's right. The world's gonna tell you where you need to, where you belong at this time." That's right. So I, I learned a long time ago to. What am I, I know you're going to talk later at the end about, about uh, execution, my words, but I learned a long time ago, try it. Don't be afraid to try it. You never know where it's going to lead you to, especially if you believe that your steps are being ordered. I was talking to a girlfriend earlier today, and I told her I had a client six years ago came to me and said she wanted to pay me to teach her tennis. I never played tennis before in my life. Right. Guess what? I hired somebody to teach me how to play tennis. That's right. That's right. And I learned how to play tennis. I, then I... Then I asked them to teach me how to teach tennis. That's I right. started with that young girl six years ago. She's my client, biggest paying client to this day, and led me to three or four other people. But if I wouldn't have taken a chance, right? I take a, somebody hired me to teach them boxing. I was up there getting beat up trying to learn how to box. Okay, we're gonna start in two weeks. I'll, you follow me? <laughs> Don, I am following you. I am picking up what you're dropping, honey, because it's real people, right? And by the way, before I go any further, Gabe wanted to say hello to you and I. Gabe's like, oh my God, my two favorite people. So hey, Gabe, um, thank you for joining us. So when that's how I started. That's how that, I started training. So, and so I, I never went back. back. You said something about taking that step, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm always coaching in that arena of, I call it LEAP, L-E-A-P, yeah. letting yeah. everything appear possible. Yeah. So you, as an exactly. entrepreneur, I'm yes. here, you had to let everything appear possible, right? Mm -hmm. What? How do you expand the territory, right? Mm -hmm. How do you think, I don't even call it thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. I call it crushing the box. Absolutely. Absolutely, Absolutely. right? You, Absolutely. Be afraid. you can't be afraid to take chances. Cannot. People take chances in life are the ones who win. You cannot be afraid to take chances. I took so many chances on myself. I bet on me every time because I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to show up. And, yes. and, if I, and if I if I fail, I know that failure doesn't mean defeat. Yes. Failure yes. means I just got to try harder. Come I need on to now. something. That's all Come it on. means. Come on. Fear doesn't have to mean defeat. So every That's single right. time something didn't work out in my life, God used it to take me to right. another direction. That's you right. hear me? I opened up... Um, I'm getting ahead of ahead of your questions. <laughs> Listen, this is why this platform is here. You you all see who I'm bringing to the yummy cafe. If you're not listen, if you don't have your your napkin and you drooling, you're not listening very clearly, honey. Because this is here is some good juicy nuggets and diamonds for your destiny. She is telling it and being as transparent yes. and vulnerable because that's what it's about. I'm hearing, and we're gonna move forward. But this is listen, we can stay here right here in this moment, in this moment, right? But what I'm hearing you say so much of, and that's so powerful, Don, is mm -hmm. that you really knew that mm -hmm. what was inside of you yeah. was going to allow itself to come to manifestation, right, right. to be birth, if you just kept the course, no yes, matter what. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, God, and then God confirmed some things along the way. He confirmed some things. When I left, when I left 
When I left California, I was here about 20 years before anybody came to visit me. And that it's not a bad thing. Don't take it as a bad thing. No, 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 no. Because let me tell you why. Because I'm, ah, uh, okay, let me tell you who I am. I love the Lord. <laughs> I love the Lord. That is my foundation. So he had to take me away from my family so he can get me rooted and grounded in his word. Mm. Right? If I, had a, if I had people to run home to, he wouldn't have my attention. That's but sometimes right. God got to get you away from all the noise so that he can plant in you what he wants to grow. So I know that. Um, yes. I've always been saved. As a, as a, as, I hate to go here, but I've always been saved as an ex- accepting Christ as my personal savior. But when God got rooted in my life, is when I was by myself with nobody coming to see me. And I joined the church, the corner church. Didn't know that stuff with no place to go. Smart enough to get up in the morning, go down the street to church. That is where I got baptized. That is where God, where God rooted me and grounded me in his word. That is where dawn start to come alive. And then it's not confirming something. Mm-hmm. When I started to go back home, um, uh, let me let me say this. It's important that you hear. The day I called home yeah. to my family, the, the day all the all of this, the first confirmation gave me, I just needed you here. Those mm-hmm. things were in place in your life for you to be here. This is what I want to do. The day I called home, my mother, my father, and my sister became my best friend. We talk on the phone every single day. My biggest, what I thought was my challenges, disappeared. Wasn't no conversation about it because I knew they loved me. Yes. And yes. then when I went back to Cleveland, I loved my family. It was yes. just nothing, nothing was in Cleveland for me. Right. right. Nothing confirmation. You were supposed to be there. Right. So he started confirming that I made the right move. Does that mm. make sense? Yes, he he'll confirm what you're doing. Yes. And then you, you stay the course, and then he'll make everything make sense. He mm. took those insecurities I had all my life with that jacket down to my knees, and now what? He birthed DS Fitness, right? He right. birthed what I do for a living, from me stepping into the gym to build muscles, to build glutes, to build my quads. He turned that into a business that pays me to this day. Mm. When I first started, I started with one client. I got no babies, no husband. I said, I can do this one client. Yes. I trained her for free. I went from a free person to $75 an hour. That's right. And then up. That's right. From free. I said, let me get her in shape That's for free. Right. That's right. And then I told the world what my price was. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And then, God will confirm where you are. He'll mm. confirm it. He'll shut doors that he don't want you to, that he don't want open. And he'll open the ones that he wants. And then you'll see when you plant your feet. I tried to go home three times. The last time I tried to go home, um, just because I was homesick, wasn't nothing yeah. wrong. Right. I left my apartment building. I heard my father had cancer, so I packed up, went to Cleveland. Was there three days? Well, mm-hmm. my father was supposed to be going to chemo, and um, he went to he went to the he went to the doctor's office, and they said we don't see any cancer. My so then my father came home. And I said so no chemo. He said no. I'm there three days resting. He said, you ready to go back? And I was like, yep. He said, bye. I packed up and went back. Got my same apartment bill now I left. Wow. I packed up and left. They gave it right back to me. So he yeah. confirmed some things. That's right. I didn't miss a beat. That's right. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Sister, listen, before we go to the next moment, right, which I was right here, before we talk about your hurdle moments, I got to ask this question because I know the people want to know, what color was that leather jacket, Don? Black. <laughs> You ain't got to ask. <laughs> Don, I hope you still have that leather coat. You, I hope you have it. I, you, don't. Oh. I don't. At the time, I didn't I didn't know it was going to mean so much. Yeah. You know, I told yes. like, it was happening. It went from, I went from having a leather jacket on to trying to run my way. <laughs> but it was grown, baby steps. <laughs> and then I finally took the leather jacket on. And I went to wearing really big pants. Because I was hiding what was in here. But you know, God was doing some things one thing at a time. He got me this entrepreneur role. I'm gonna fix all that. Oh, I'm gonna fix all that. He yeah. is such a gentleman, isn't God? I say yeah, it all yeah. the time. God, thank you for waiting on me, you know, yeah. and let me go yeah. this way. And that. He's such a gentleman because he yeah. knows already, right? Oh, yeah. my goodness. This is so good. It's so juicy. The Yummy Cafe. Don, what were some of your hurdle moments? What were some of those pain points, as I call them, the points where you said, am I supposed to really keep doing this? How do right. I keep guys this in my business? <laughs> What does this look like? Because I know for me, I was like, now, wait a second, God, you know, are you sure? You know, mm-hmm. and then I started comparing myself and I said, no, wait, don't do that. I said, I know it's natural to do that, but God, are you listening? Or am I right. just on your own, my own? You know, people have lost their businesses. 
Right. Had to start over. Some of my coaches who coach me, right? The millionaires, they've had to do that, you know. Mm-hmm. So we really want to know what were some of your hurdles that you had, and then when COVID hit, how did that happen for oh, you? Oh wow! Well, what am I? What am I? I'm in. I'm in the now. I have a gym. My first gym. I was paying two hundred dollars a month for probably uh, almost three thousand square feet. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. One of my friends owned some space. 200 bucks a month for some huge space. Yeah. yeah. Then one day I walk into the space and someone had broke in and took everything. They took all 16 steppers. They took, they cleaned the place completely out. Wow. And then um and then uh the owner said, you know what, Don? Um, so many break-ins, it's not safe for you over here anymore. And it was on the corner of Van Ness and Manchester, a good area. And then he said, right when this, right when they had broken in, he said, I'm thinking about selling the place. Uh so I said, okay. So I had to look for something else. Now yeah. I was heartbroken. I walk in to teach a class. Everybody's standing there, and we have no equipment. Wow. And I said, now I, I started this class. I have any equipment. I taught the class because I'm not the feeder. That's There's right. There's no situation I'm in. It's, it's all about perspective. I taught that class, and I said, okay, you guys, um, we're gonna be here for the rest of the week. And on Friday, I'm gonna call you with the new location. I found the new location in one week. Mind you, I don't have any money for the space. I was only paying two hundred dollars over here. My new my new lease is gonna be twenty one hundred. Mm-hmm. From wow. two hundred twenty one, never had a record of making that much money because I was really just getting started. Uh, I moved into that place. One of my clients, one of my personal training clients. When I said I didn't have a record of making that much money, I'm talking about paying that much money in rent. That's what I meant by that. Yeah. Uh, one of my personal training clients laid all the mirrors. Another client laid the floor. Another client rebought my speaker. Another one of my personal training clients bought sixteen steppers. My my client base filled that studio for me. That was a confirmation again. I'm supposed to be here, right? Yeah. yeah. So as long as I think if you walk with a positive attitude, you give God an opportunity to perform. I'm not saying you won't be disappointed. I taught that class with That's tears right. in my eyes, That's hold right. back a lump in my throat, but yeah. I knew again that I was going to show up because I he already confirmed I was supposed to be here. Be here. Once that confirms you're on the right track, you don't have to keep confirming it. Mm. You don't have to keep confirming. You don't need him to keep confirming. Once he confirms you, this is what I want you to be. You're on the right road. He go. He's gonna work it out. That's so I went to this new place. As soon as I went, and I went in with a group of people. All of them were okay with me charging them a flat rate. The place paid for itself. We didn't miss a beat in the workout. Awesome. We didn't awesome. miss a beat. Another another one of my hurdles happened. Um. Uh. When um, I lost my niece, mm-hmm. I lost my niece. My niece died. Huge her. She was my biggest cheerleader. She would call me. She was in Florida watching me do my thing. I, I had to keep going because I know somebody's eyes were on me. I was her superstar. Yeah. And when she was taken, um, I had to trust God. Knew what he was doing it was the most hurtful thing in the world for to receive the phone call that she passed away. It was devastating. My sister couldn't move. I had to fly all over and get her body from uh, Florida to to Cleveland. And I no longer had my cheerleader. Mm. And even even though I was, I was a a, a little devastated. I said that I wanted to do something in honor for my niece. So I started to, what am I going to leave her? Mm. (laughs) What am I going to leave her? And again, I found another way to keep going. So even though you get hit with some disappointments, some challenges, they're supposed to come. Yeah. I'm gonna get character. That's James one. How about do it when you face trial? Right. The right. Right. All right. Right. All they do is build perfection. The Bible says that you're lacking in nothing. They they build character. Yes. They build character. Yes. They make you perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I love it. No, I'm hearing you say, and I always say, you know, life doesn't, we, we think that life happens to us, but really life is happening for us, even right. in our losses, you know, and it yeah. is perspective is how we mm-hmm. see. I say it often is that power of association. How are you perceiving right. something? And we're going to feel the pain, right? You're going to yeah. feel the losses. We're natural people. We're living in this natural body. We're having a natural experience. Yes. But we know that your feet are planted, like you said. Yeah. You know that you know that you know that you know, like Dr. Price, which are always to teach us. Yes. If you know that you know that you know that you know, then you right. gotta keep moving, right? You yes. gotta keep pressing forward. And I've I've been there, I've seen and heard and you know oh, some yeah. of your 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 hurdles. And you know, I'm like, Don, you where you went where? Who passed away? You're back. And and listen, listeners, she yes. comes right back. 
and be right back doing her thing. Check this out, because now, now God elevates you every time. Now I got a cause. I got a cause to move forward for. Mm. And we got a cause, right? We got a deeper reason. We, right. We're motivated by our reason. So what, what is your reason now, right? Come on, Don. Don, listen, I'm getting ready to just leave and go run around the building, everybody. Let's do it. I'm here. <laughs> I'm just going to go right outside. Cause we'll be right back. <laughs> I, can, I can't contain it, and I don't try to act like I can. Right. This is what this platform is, and I love it, Don. You are speaking the truth. You are moving mountains right now. You are speaking and allowing the atmosphere to change for those yeah. that are listening. I met a sister, a young baby girl, a young baby entrepreneur, Don, a couple of mm -hmm. months ago, right, about last mm -hmm. month. And she was mm -hmm. out passing her little flyers out, you know. You know how you and I are. We stop, right. you know, what's this? What you're doing? So of right. course, I start motivating her. I take her card, you know, and she says, "Sis, I'm just getting started with her own little. It was not little with her um business, you know, to a a, a, a puppy, you know, doing organic dog food and things." Ah. For and so I said, I'm going to put you in the circle of some sisters that I know. They do a pop-up show online and you mm -hmm. need to be around like-minded sisters to just mm -hmm. help shape you and form you. And Don, she looked at me. She said, oh my God, sister, thank you so much because my family right. does not believe in what I'm doing. Wow. I said, but who told you to do it? She said, God. Right. I said, here you I meeting me today. I said, let wow. me tell you how your steps are ordered. I said, I wasn't coming over to my dad's house today. I was at my dad's house. I said, I wasn't coming over today, but mm -hmm. I was moved to come and bring him something or do something. And so then I was walking my dog, Bison, mm -hmm. and I saw her. I said, so I want you to know that your steps are ordered. Right. No doubt. I said, they're not no doubt. believe in what God gave you because it wasn't a conference call when he yeah. gave you. It wasn't not their vision. Absolutely. Right. It's not right. And yeah. so I put her in line, you know, in alignment with everyone, and she's on her way. And so you're right when you say, when yeah. you know, when God has told you, those things will happen. Even your yeah. family, friends right. will tell you or look at you crazy. It's not their vision. Mm -hmm. It's not, not their vision. Not. And, and I love it. Go and ahead. I, we talked about COVID. What did COVID do? I was yeah. opening up my, I was opening up. I had a gym for, gym for about 16 years. I was opening, I just opened a new gym February 1st, 2019. Congratulations. And then March 18th, right? March 18th, yeah. COVID hit. <laughs> so I held on to it for a moment and it didn't make sense to let it go. And guess what? Uh, God said, you started this thing outside. Ain't no reason to get discouraged. I know what I'm doing. Mm. So um, remember I told you when, when, when God got you, he's going to open the doors that only he can open in your life. He's going to give you what yes. you need to make it through. And during that COVID season, uh, it and listen, I wrote four books. I got a fifth one I'm working on. And not just because of COVID, but if I if I would have been going on and on with that with that studio, yes. I wouldn't have worked over 50 and 50. Come on. I would, this is my ebook. This is it. It's just in a paper form. Um, this is my ebook. I, and it's it's amazing. It talks about my struggle when I hit 50. It's great. It's selling right now. I'm doing the Crebby World, my platform platform. If I was in that studio. I would not have been doing my jump garden with 30 videos, including 30 diet, a diet on, If I was in the studio, I wouldn't have written, written my book, Fit to Win. All right? Yes, yes, I yes. talked about what it takes for you to be a winner. This is done. I and I have her. another book I did. So Wait a minute, I, let I, me just look down, look down, look down. Look. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> All of this is in the fitness industry. So um, you gotta, you gotta look for, look for opportunities to grow from your disappointment. You have to look for what, what is God doing? Where is He? Yes. What direction are you sending me in? Yes. And remember, it's not defeat. It's not no. It's not failure. Um, he just wants you to pivot, <laughs> right? And take some chances. Take Don't some be afraid chance. to take chances. I took a chance. How I knew I could do this book by myself was I co-authored two books. One was, one was with Les Brown, and one was with Kevin Bracy. One was Unleash the Leader Within You. One was Unleash the Vision Within You, and that was years ago. Yeah, and that allowed me to know if I can write a chapter, I can write 12 or 13, right? One. And uh, if I can write a two two chapters, I can do some ebooks. That's so right. um, um, I'm going to be in this industry for a minute. It may look a little different. I may transform from all the exercises I'm doing yes. to doing some content, That's which right. is even more amazing. So, That's yeah. Right. That's right. Don, listen, I'm just smiling. I love the energy. I love the the storyline behind you being victorious yeah. and you knowing that. Listen, people, this is what I want our listeners to get, that even in the dark hour, when mm -hmm. it looks like it's a dark hour, right? Ask 
God, what do I do in this moment, right? What is the power of one? Yeah. What is the power of being in alignment with him? This Yummy Cafe was a tour that I was doing, local tours, right? In, in boutiques and small places and bringing women entrepreneurs to share their yumminess and COVID hit. And God says, so you just not going to do it? I said, well, uh, he said, why don't you use the same platform that you've been using to do your other show? You've done television and radio and shows before. Right. I said, you're right. He said, I know I'm right. Now let's get to it. Right. Yeah. And so you're right. There's so many things that will be birthed as a result yeah. of our obedience. Oh, yeah. Trusting. Yeah. And you have to be committed to your purpose no matter what. Right. Non-negotiable. Right, right Don? Absolutely. Non-negotiable. I love in the beginning when you did this. Go home. Yes. Or homeless. Go home. Go home. Make and, a choice. And you said home. And you didn't even and your homeless wasn't even down here. It was right uh -huh. here. It was right here. Yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. Wow. Make a choice. Right. And go with your choice. And it's okay. Your choice may sometimes you might make the wrong decision. But yes. your wrong decision will become the right. Because that's how God works. He says all things I'm at work mm. together for the good. He makes everything work together for the good. Everything. everything. This, is, this is one of my best work here. This is one of my best work here, right here. One of the quotes in here says, sometimes winning means beating yourself. I had to beat myself back then. That's Kobe Bryant's quote, right? His last quote before he passed away. Sometimes mm. winning means beating yourself. Mm. And when I, I had to beat those insecure moments I was having. I had to beat all that doubt that was inside of me. Yes. And yes. I had to beat that by believing in somebody else's belief in me until mine kicked in. That's what you have to do sometimes. That's right. That's, That's right. That's what you have to do sometimes. That's right. That's Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I love it. Okay. Well, Don, listen, when did you know that all of what you're talking to us about and sharing in your journey, right? Mm -hmm. And understand you've had clarity, you had wisdom, you had directions, you had the trials and tribulations, but you knew some way that your purpose was your worthy moment. And what I mean by your worthy moment is that your life cannot go without you doing what has been called uh, impressed upon you to do. You knew that this was worthy of your living, worthy of your lifestyle, worthy of yeah. your fulfillment. What did that look like for you? How did that show up? What was that for you? Well, for me, um, I couldn't sleep until I had certain things done. I have a class, a 6 a.m. boot camp that I do, and I can't sleep until my work for that is prepared. The passion for it is there. The yes. passion for the work, 20 years later, before I go to bed, I know every step we're going to do. I know everything that I'm going to do in my boot camp. I'm there early. I'm setting up. The passion's there. The passion's there. I don't get tired of it. Mm -hmm. And then and then I start getting calls. And I start getting referrals from people. I start getting referrals. I don't. I make my money now by referrals mostly. Mm -hmm. I don't do a lot of advertising. And that's when I knew, that's when I knew that I was worthy of this. Because before I told you, I didn't think it was a gift. And I was like, no, they, I was waiting on God to show me what my gifts were. Oh, there ain't no gift. And then it started making some incredible rooms for my life. Mm -hmm. And I had to say to myself, okay, this got to be a gift. <laughs> <laughs> this has to be. First right. of all, I, 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 one of my clients, some of you know that I sing often with my clients. And they, they try to tell me that I can't sing. And I say, that can't be true. Because the Bible says that your gift and your talent will make room for you That's and right. put you in front of great men. So i got to be able to sing because I'm singing with Erica Campbell, right? I'm singing, <laughs> I'm singing with some of the best in the planet. So, <laughs> and and I have like, heard Don sing, and Don has sung at my <laughs> events. She's in her, I'm going to let her sing her song at the end. She has her signature, honey. It's her signature they try, song. They try to tell me that they're a gift. Listen, no. When your gift was shut, it will make room for you. Right. That's when I knew. That's when I knew that this was it. That's when I knew yeah. I was supposed to give my heart into this. And ideas started coming to me. Ideas to do things. The idea for over fifty and fit. The idea for a uh, fit to win boot camp. Right. Um, uh, fit to win journal. This journal was amazing. I love it. It's amazing. It. I love it's great. It. And the that. book that I just finished, the creating the lifestyle of winning, and it was so easy for me to write. Wow. And uh, yeah, absolutely, right. things just started right. lining up. Let me ask you two things. Did you have the content for your books, right? Was the content written for your, let's do the journal. Did you have things 
just around that you had been speak when you do your speaking were those some of your speaking points from that how did you know it was worthy enough to put into a journal um because i know i like journals i do too i like journals and then what i did was i i decided all the things i sat with myself first before i did anything i sat down with me and i said what do i want in the journal what do i need in the journal and i put in this journal everything that i needed for me to make when i sit down what i, what I would want Yes. And that's all the content I put in here. Then I started looking online to see what the other journals were and don't know journals have what I have. None of them have this. That's right. And that's why I knew I had something really, really great. Does that make sense? Yeah. I started writing my book, um, maybe Fit to Win, Creating a Lifestyle of Winning. I started writing that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I got maybe like 10 chapters, but it was called something different then. Uh huh. Yeah. And then I stopped. Yeah. And then one day I just got all the content. One day it just came flushing to me, and then I finished the book. Okay. So he gave it to me a long time ago, and I finished it recently. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I can't even say it was during the pandemic. I have nothing to do because I always had something to do. Over the last maybe four months, I finished the book "Fit to Win: Creating a Lifestyle of Winning." I finished that book based on my own life. What do I do to create the lifestyle of What's important for me to create a lifestyle of winning? That's right. What's important for me is to make sure spiritually I'm rooted and grounded. Yes. What's important, that's the first thing to being a winner, you gotta be rooted in God's word. For me. That's right. The second me, thing really. was mentally things have to be in shape. The yes. next thing for me was, and you've heard this before, it's nothing new. My finances have to be in shape so I can yes. fuel my purpose. Yes. And the next thing was, I need to be nutritionally and physically fit. These are all the things that make Dawn win every day. Listen, Don, sense. pause. Don, I'm going to have you give those three again for the people that need to write that down. And Gabe, I want to get Gabe is saying this is such great content. And Gabe, you're here with us. I need you to know this, Gabe. I don't usually do this. But Gabe, I said your name today. I said Gabe is on this right now listening to us and she's participating. I said Gabe's name earlier today. Yes, I did, Gabe. And here you are. God is so good, Gabe. I said your name today, baby girl. Yes, I did. Love you. Love you. Love you. Don, say those three again, please. Give the content, honey. Let's go. I will. Let me say it to you. Um, let me say it to you this way, because I need to, I need you to be really, really clear. Uh -huh. yeah. One minute of what it what it means to win. Um being fit to win not only means being physically fit, not just being physically fit to perform at the optimal level of health, mm -hmm. but it also means being spiritually and mentally fit, secure to show up for yourself every day. Mm -hmm. And then being financially fit to live out your purpose. Mm -hmm. So does that make sense? Yes. yes. Being physically fit, fit to win means being physically fit, Physically, it's not just about being physically fit. It's also about being spiritually and mentally secure so that you can show up for yourself. So for me, I have to have my foundation rooted. If I'm off balance spiritually, I ain't winning. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm not winning. That's right. <laughs> Every circumstance that come my way, I'm like, ah, oh. spiritually. When, when my spiritual game is tight, I'm winning every day. When I'm getting up in the morning, I'm putting them first. When I'm spending some time in prayer and devotion, yes. I'm good. Yes. And then the next thing, when I'm mentally secure, I affirm myself. We talk about this all the time. It's nothing new to you. I affirm myself before I walk out the door. I tell me who God says I am. I am who God says yes. I am. I can do what God says I can do. I'm above only and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. I will delight myself in the law of the Lord. And I'll meditate there day and night. I'll be like a tree. Ran about the rivers of water, bring forth fruit of my season. My leaves shall not wither, and everything I do shall prosper. I will remember the Lord my God, for He was giving me the power and the ability to get wealth. My hands are blessed, and the works of my hands are blessed. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Therefore, no weapon formed against me. Come on, God. Greater is He that is in me than any man that's in the world. Come on, Therefore, God. I am a achiever. I am an overcomer. I'm a winner. I am somebody. I'm a benefactor of immeasurable success. Woo! <laughs> You can't say all that without knowing the word. Done. The next on, thing somebody. for me. Come on. The yes, next yes, thing yes, for me. Yes. yes. I gotta feed my body in a way that allows me to win. I can't put anything in my body that's unhealthy. That doesn't say I plan to win. That doesn't say I'm winning the day. I eat the same thing every day because I like the way health feels. I love how health feels. Yes. I eat yes. the same thing every day. Yes. Like how do my energy level been here? Y'all think I'm on. 
This is no, cool in Ohio. <laughs> I understand it. Listen, Don, you are dropping. You, I told you, didn't I say you changed the atmosphere? No, anyway. Didn't I say she's manifest? I said it. Listen, I said I gave everybody a heads up. I just want everybody to know. You watching this replay? You know that you have something to say in the comments. Gabe is over here saying so she says she you know her as Punky. It's Punky. You know Punky. Hey, Punky. That's Punky, honey. She said you preaching, honey. Yes, you are. But I know that's what Don. Listen, Don calls me on the phone. Right, we're talking. I call. We connecting and getting things in order. Immediately, she starts confirming and speaking into my spirit. I'm like, well, I thought I'm. Wait a minute, I'm trying to. She started telling me. I said, okay, God. Now you didn't get another Holy Ghost setup. She is never <laughs> turned off, and I love it because. I'm that person for other people, right? Yeah. So I love it when God says, now I'm about to refill you and replenish yeah. you, Deshaun. So Don is talking. She starts off real calm and smooth, everybody. She starts <laughs> off, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. Then she'll ask you a question. And that's her way of saying that. So what you, so why are you not? So when you gonna, so don't you think, and she just started telling you and she's ministering to you and you're just so full. Don, you had me so full. I was trying not to cry and do the ugly cry. I was thanking God all the way to midnight when we got off the phone. This girl is, Don, you, your anointing has always been just a bountifulness of God's mm -hmm. pure love and his Thank wisdom you. and clarity. So to talk about your moments, right? Your inception moment, your hurdles, and then mm -hmm. what's worthy. It makes absolute sense that yes. God would have had you to produce in the yes. middle of, a, of, of what we appear to see was a crisis. And it was, and it mm -hmm. is, but he knew exactly what he was doing when he called you to this right. platform. And yes. you already had a willing and open heart. Right. You were already available. Yeah. You were available. Yeah. You didn't run back home and say, I'm done with this. Listen, I don't mm -hmm. know how you was living in that abandoned apartment. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you did it. I don't, I, I hear you, but that's really, you know, something to wrap your head around. Yeah. Just live smart. I went from here. Yeah, just live smart. God is good. Trust that he got you. Yes. I, said, I went from, I, I elevated, I went from the batting building. I went there to a storage. I went there to my car and I was smart enough to park in front of, in front of uh, Noel Jones's house, so I could be safe. <laughs> that's, right. That's, right. that's right. You know nothing gonna happen there. That's that's right. 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 My no, goodness. Was... My goodness. Yeah. Don, you dropped the. You was gonna have me say my affirmation. I said no, 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 no. The, the people here, the, the, we'll be we'll be in here forever. And that's okay too. I also asked my beautiful women entrepreneurs about their journey. Mm -hmm. Right? How did they get here? That's mm -hmm. always the title of our show. And so Don's what I call journey words, right? These were her journey words. So Don, I want you to say them and then tell us what do they mean for you? How did they shape, you know, yeah. your moments, your heart space, your ministry business is what I call it. Yeah. How did these words show up for you? First thing was faith. Remember I had to choose home or homeless. I bet on me first. I had to have faith in myself. And if, if you don't have the faith in yourself, I want to encourage you to find someone else's faith in you until yours kicks in. It will find somewhere, someone else's faith. But you have to believe that you got what it takes to win. You've got to believe that. And then perseverance. Just because something doesn't work out doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Remember, I had to close the gym. But the gym birthed all this. It birthed my online business. I was trying to birthed so much more. So sometimes success may take a shift and look different from what you think it's supposed to look like. Just trust God and persevere through the challenges times. He got you. And in every opportunity you get, execute. Execution is everything. Try it. Remember I told you I got a job uh, playing tennis and didn't know how to play tennis? It only took me two weeks to learn. She's still a client six years later. Guess what? She Every year she gave me a raise. So she's pay, paying more than she paid before, and she let me tell the clients. So execution is everything. Don't sit on those dreams. God gave me dreams for a reason. If you don't execute, you don't have anything. That makes sense. Don, it makes sense. It makes love. It makes manifestation. It makes abundance. It makes success. It makes a life that is fulfilled. Yes. Is fulfilled. If it makes sense, it makes dollars, right? Yes. <laughs> That's what we say. That's what the people say. That's right. That's so right. That is absolutely Don. I want to just talk a little bit about the perseverance. Because okay. I want to go back. I wanted to ask you something. Mm -hmm. You're in Los Angeles. No one knows you. You're right. in the big city of L.A. Right. 
where people are already known in this uh, arena, right? This space of, you know, physical fitness and training. There's a lot of that in L.A. Mm -hmm. How did you persevere through the competition? Because God, this is a gift God gave me. There's no competition. Sometimes winning means beating yourself. I'm not in competition when God gave me a gift. He gave you a gift. That's yours. And he gave you the people. He put the people in your life that you're going to bless. There's enough for all of us. I don't have to look and see what you're doing. So so a good friend of mine just opened a gym. Another friend of mine is exercising with kids. I had a gym. I exercised with kids. Y'all look over there and say, oh, maybe I should do that again. No. No. I'm happy for what she's doing. I'm staying in my lane. I'm writing books. This is the course I'm on right now. Maybe I'll open the gym later. But when I wake up, when I wake up to five book sales, they can have the gym, right? <laughs> she can have, I, did, I did that before. Yeah. And so it, it, may, it may start to look different. Just persevere. God got you. Don't look over the fence. They said that's the biggest indoor sport we play is we always look over the fence at what everybody else is doing. Ooh. She's single. Yeah. I mean, she got a man. She getting married. Yeah. I'm single. Yeah. How's, you know, no, yeah. God got you. Yeah. And when you believe he has you, you persevere. Absolutely. Absolutely. I ask you that because I am always teaching about how we compare ourselves. Right. And that is just something that we do. It's such a bad habit that it becomes this ugly lifestyle that we've chosen Mm -hmm. to compare. And we've heard that comparison is the thief of joy. Comparison is meaningless and it separates us from our true self. And there's really no comparison. No comparison. You can't you can't beat me being me. You you do a tor- terrible job trying right. to be me. Absolutely. And I'll do a terrible job because I don't know what to do with your dog. <laughs> I don't know your dog. Your dog. I, I would be really bad with her and her kids because I don't even know how to change a diaper. Right. This is me. Right. With no competition right. being done. Right. When I'm wholeheartedly done, mm. I'm mm. my best self. Mm. When I'm in the lane God wants me to be in. Mm. I can show up for me every single time. That's and right. when? And when? I can't show up being Deshaun. No. no, and I can't show up being that. Look, I like it though. You got that energy. You know, me and you in the room together. They like. Ooh, they just. They in trouble. They, they in trouble. trouble. They in trouble, Don. <laughs> Don, this is now. I know you showed us your products. Show them again, and mm-hmm. any other thing. But I want you to show us each one at a time, if you will, and let us know how can we purchase them. Okay, you can go to dropping. DawnStrozier.com. This is my over 50 and fit. It's a it's a it's an ebook. It's amazing. It talks about my journey when I gained a little bit of weight. And you know, you turn 50 ladies, you get eight pounds, it's guaranteed in your midsection. And all you gotta do is persevere. A couple of tricks you need to make because you can't eat the same way you were eating. But here's the story. Here's the seven, the five secrets I share to getting yourself back in shape over 50. You gotta get it at DawnStrozier.com. This is my over 50 and 50. Jump starter. This is the this is the, the 30 meal plan and the 30 exercises. And in about a month, I'm gonna be doing a, a live um a live workout, 30 day workout, the same exercises that are in here. But this is takes the guesswork out of what you're doing. It's also an ebook. And then here's my journal, my fit to win journal. I'm super excited about this. Yeah, um, yeah. it's awesome. I would tell you what's in here, but you gotta get it. I want you to get it. It'll be it'll change your life. I absolutely love it. I think it's the best thing I've done. Um, so that's the journal. It's free to journal your diet and your exercise. And there's some motivation in here. It's a lot of good stuff. You can also get that on my website, DawnStroger.com. And coming real soon, my Fit to Win, Creating a Lifestyle of Winning. It tells you everything you need to do to win in life. And the first thing you got to do is you got to be spiritually rooted and grounded. The second thing, you got to have your mental. Um, it says that. What happens in life is what's already happened in your mind. It's simply a mental manifestation of what has already happened in your mind. So you gotta mentally get together this so that you can win. The next thing I talk about diet and exercise, and then I talk about getting your finances together so you can birth a dream. Mm. That's it. All right. Birth the dream. Birth the dream. Don, are you speaking anywhere? Or where also, well, let me ask you this. Are you speaking anywhere of any upcoming engagements? And if they are listening and everyone that's seeing this live in the replay and they're like, I got a book with her now. Do they also go to your website to book yes. to start working? You want to book? Send me an email at dawn at ds-fitness.com. Mm-hmm. If you'd like to book me, I'd love to talk for you. Um, I have a few things coming up. I'm confirming them now. Most importantly, if you want to work out with me, send me an email. 
Um, you can also go on my website and sign up for one of my classes at my boot camp. If you have a challenge doing that, just send me an email now. Or DM me. Get me in the DM. And yeah. Know. So you got Please your go Instagram. You're there at Instagram, right, at Don Strozer. Mm -hmm. Also Facebook at Don mm -hmm. Strozer and also at your Twitter. Don, yeah. let me ask you this. Uh -huh. Just so the people can know. Cause I already know what this okay. boot camp. What you do with the boot camp, Don? Like it, Don. You know how hard do you go in? No, listen, listen, no. So listen, Punky's a good friend of mine. Love her. Have you heard? Have you heard her work? Yes, I've been knowing oh. Gabe. She was okay. So you I know knew Gabe before. Gabe, did I know you before you was born? Um, I've been knowing. Gabe okay, before all that talent she's sitting on. Let me give an example. Yeah. Today yeah. she came. She was a little hurt in class. Her knees are bothering her. I gave her her own workout. I hooked her up with another young lady. She did her own workout. So there are people in the class as as, as young as 30, as old as 79, 79 family Houston's in the class. So I'll meet you right where you are. Don't worry. Come and I'm going to meet you right where you are. I have a low impact. I have an intermediate and I have a high impact. So you'll be fine. Mm. You'll be perfectly fine. So we, we, do do, we do do burpees, but you got low impact know. burpees. <laughs> I like purpose. You know, I work out with that Jillian uh, Michaels. Uh, D. Yes, D. I know you do. And she be upsetting me, but I still do it. I don't care. <laughs> Don, what time do you start your work? At 6 a.m. Monday and Friday at 6 a.m. <laughs> Listen, and the girl goes to midnight. <laughs> the girl goes I'm leaving, to midnight. I'm leaving here, changing my clothes real quick, and I'm running to do a class. You know, it feels so good to know some clothes today. Yes, I'm so glad you did. I just go to the gym like this. Yes, honey. They will like it. Look, 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 look. Don, listen, before we do your pillars of strength, I always, oh. uh, what rule do you live by? You said some of them, but there may be another. Do you want to give the people a touch of that singing child, and I, I, that, that song that you sing, honey? Y'all going to have to come sing me in my concert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not singing today. I can't bless y'all with all that. That's right. They can't get all of it, Donna, right? They can't get all of it. So listen, we have had such a phenomenal time. I call it experience. We have really been in the space of really inspiring, uplifting, and but transforming the lives of all of you that have been here, those that are listening and listening to the, um, and looking at the replay. We are so, you know, grateful to you. Again, just go ahead and put your comments in the comment, put hashtag replay. If you have a question or you think you missed something, I'm going to get back with to, to you. If you want me to forward the information to Ms. Don, of course, I'm doing that as well. But we are so grateful that you've been here with us, allowing us to really serve and just deposit it into you. This is why I love the Yummy Cafe, honey. I get so excited. You know, I'm always saying, get your cup and your salsa, have a seat at the table, honey, for the Yummy Cafe. Because these women that I bring to you are just being obedient to their purpose until they're calling right so don what is the rule that you live by do you have any other rule that you live by other than what you've already given well, us just a wealth you know no, of i just want to tell you that no i don't really have a rule that i live by except just try to make sure god is in everything you do yeah. um that's the number one rule put him first because when you put him first everything else will work out <laughs> yes put yes. him first everything else will work out he'll take your heartaches your disappointments He'll take um, uh, everything that's, that went wrong in your life and he'll make it work out for your good and his glory. That's the best rule I can give you. But I want to remind you yeah. to live a life that's as extraordinary. It takes extraordinary faith. Mm. It takes extraordinary perseverance. Mm. And it takes extraordinary execution. Yes. That's it. Yes. I don't want to be mediocre. It's not acceptable for me. Don, I'm, allergic, I'm allergic to basic. I'm allergic <laughs> to basic. Okay. I tell my so students, my college students, that hashtag I'm allergic to basic. I just don't even yeah. know how to write. How does that show up? Right. Yeah. I get it. And some of us have been afraid of that. You know, mm -hmm. some of us have been afraid to turn our ordinary into extraordinary. And we've right. just been afraid of what that looks like. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you said that, you mm -hmm. know, because it has to be extraordinary, right? Yeah. You have to think outside of what you see in the mm -hmm. natural. Most people just come up with ideas. They never execute, execute. them. They just come up with ideas. Yeah. And yeah. it's great to have an idea. It's better to execute that idea, to follow through, That's to get right. it done. And if That's you can't right. get it done, put it into the hands of some folks, the hands of some people who can get it done for you. Execution right. is everything. But first, you got to have the faith. You got to persevere through all the challenges that you face. 
knowing God got you, mm. and then you got to execute. Mm. All right? Mm. Thank you for having me. Listen, Yay. this has been, thank you for coming on and sharing all of your greatness with us. It has just been wonderful. I am so always delighted, you know, to sit before women who have allowed themselves to listen and be obedient to their calling, to their purpose. I get filled up. I'm, you know, not just motivated. I'm transformed. I'm inspired. So listen, I want to thank all of you who have come on and that you've been a part of this moment for us, this experience on the Yummy Cafe. I'll be back next month with another exciting, phenomenal woman entrepreneur to share her inside scoop so we get that backstage pass to how does she get to where she is. And as always, I say, listen, I miss you already. And I want <laughs> you to be safe and God bless you. And as I always say, smooches yeah. and deuces and live life magnified. We love you. Thank you, my Don. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you all soon.